What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy versus everybody podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here. Versus everybody podcast episode 119. We got a special guest in the building, man. We got writer, director, actor, <laughs> and I heard he a good bowler. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Michael, man. What up, man? E Michael, you know. <laughs> so you, I know you probably wondering how I know about the bowling part. I always like to <laughs> I always like to go and do a little research, man. And I see that you were friends with somebody that I had on the show that I'm cool with. Uh, Ishi, Ishi Cash. Oh yeah. I'm like, what's something about uh, about dog? I can sit here and say it, throw him off a little bit. She's like, well, you know, he do everything that you already know, but he a good bowler, I guess. <laughs> so I say, I bring that up, man. You a good bowler, dog? Yep. Oh shoot, man. No, for real. like I average like between on a bad day, like 150, 170. Yeah, that's a good bowler. Yeah, because on, on a good day, I'm, I probably bowl like a 90. Like, it's, it's fun, though. <laughs> man, I love that job, man. I, love, like, I got better during the pandemic. Yeah. Like, we ain't had nothing else to do. Me and just go like, bowling. Just go bowling. And, like, I was in Kalamazoo. Yeah. It was a dollar per bowl, so you can't beat that. <laughs> you coming out like $5 per game, like just the whole day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you became a master bowler, man. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Now, we start off every episode with Salute Me While I'm Here. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away. Make that long caption like, oh, yeah, I love Craig or whatever. But it can't be nobody in your immediate family, man. Mm -hmm. it can't be mom, it can't be pops, it can't be brother, sister. You know what I'm saying? Your lady, you know, it got to be somebody outside of that, you know, regular answer that you would go ahead and be like, oh, yeah, I love mom. You got anybody you want to go ahead and give us uh, give some flowers to that still smell them? Yeah, my, uh, my man's Corey. His, right. his uh, IG name, Chill on Corey. All right. I met Dog like two years ago. Yeah. And... It came out of the pandemic. He was showing me love first. Mm -hmm. So he was like, yo, bro, I saw your um your clip for your your episode. I want to show you love. If you yeah. ever need anything, yeah. let me know. For sure. And you know people usually say that. Yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. ever expect yeah. you to hit them up. Yeah. But I sure. needed somebody who's like, yo, I need you to be in this movie I'm doing because yeah. everybody, like, yeah. you know, dipping. Yeah. So we talked, wrapped it up, and he was the... um. The lead dude, one of the lead dudes in my movie. With consequences? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dude, what's up. The dude who, uh, who, uh, who, who, like, you know, punched me and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. I ain't get a chance to punch him back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so y'all met just, you know saying, just random conversation. Random he saw conversation. Yeah. And now it's like one of my, like, closest homies, day yeah. ones. Duh, that's crazy because, like, bro, you be growing up thinking you just gonna grow up with these same friends, man. I tell my son this all the time. But, man, you wind up meeting dope people as you go through your journey in life mm -hmm. or whatever, man. Like, you would never know, like my um my wife, her uh her cousin, or whatever. Like me and him got super tight. Yeah. Like when I first met him, I'm like this dude like Ruben Studder, like you know what I'm saying, like, <laughs> like dude cornball. Then he went to his wedding. I'm like I don't even know who dog is. We gonna go to his wedding, but no, he wanted to, he, now he my dark god dad. So this is cool dude, up. man. Shout out to uh, Lance, man. I ain't gonna keep giving you no flowers either, dog. <laughs> <laughs> man, so uh shoot, man, how, how how you been, man? How the year been for you? 2022, man. Man, the year actually been good. And the crazy thing about it is. Like, with everything that happened, mm -hmm. if you're not cognizant of what's going on, For sure. the devil and every, everybody's going to make it seem like it's been a bad year. Oh, just Because, yeah. like, the things that's, you know, you got everybody with their own personal st struggle and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But in the last four months, I was able to, like, direct different commercials, mm -hmm. went to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I met a pastor who I watched and did, like, direct, ad his music video and For stuff. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just got done, uh being on set with bmf oh yeah i saw that yeah so it's kind of like yeah. all this stuff didn't happen in the first four months for sure so it doesn't matter what else has happened it's been like a good year so yeah, far we still yeah. got eight more months in the year and you know we always dwell on what's going on the bad stuff but we never really look at spot like you know what I'm saying those bright parts or whatever uh -huh. like 2020 with COVID, it was a messed up year but it kind of put people on the, on their ground mode you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying to go ahead and get it because Shoot, man, you <laughs> something like that was a reset for real. So you really had to like, kind of like, you know, what mm -hmm. saying if you took it the right way, yeah. people really got up with that. Like mm -hmm. they really put themselves in position. Like you know what, I want to change the trajectory of my life. Yeah, and it's like I can either keep doing the same thing, for living sure. dead, or yeah. I be like, you know what, yeah. let me put some things in motion. Like for sure. really, because you had people doing stuff, dog. People was living on Amazon, man, just ordering weights, and <laughs> I was trying to give me some weights, dog. <laughs> I couldn't find nothing. Listen, bro, the pandemic humbled a lot of people. No, for sure. You went months without a haircut. Duh. 
Well, I ain't had that issue. I got bald heads. So like, Still, like, though, man. You know, it was hard. Ball, you probably like, hey, I need like, Lisa clean yeah, up a little yeah, bit exactly. or something, man. Well, polish up there. So. <laughs> no, for sure, dog. Like, I remember my son, he got dressed up. His lineup was down here. I'm like, boy, you want me to hit it up? Like, hit? He's like, no, I don't want you to touch my job. <laughs> man. But no, it really, like, really, you had to come out that boy with something. If you didn't come out with nothing or no type of mindset or no goals, then you kind of like wasted that time that you were sitting down. Mm hmm. Now on the uh on a personal note, man, you know what I'm saying? If you don't want to talk about it, that's cool. I know uh you but you, you went on a year since you lost your uh, your father and mm -hmm. your grandmother due to COVID. Like how tough was that like losing like those two people, especially like your dad, y'all you, mm -hmm. you got the same name as them and stuff like that, your junior, like how how hard was it to get through, you know what I'm saying, that time? Cause, you know, I lost my dad when I was thirteen, so I know how it is like losing parents. That's probably if I wasn't as connected as I was with God, mm -hmm. I don't think I would have been able to get through it. Oh, yeah, just facts. because like it was so many things that I could have ran to yeah. so many things I could have fell into mm -hmm. where it was like my foundation was so firm in the God I was like you know what yeah. obviously something is happening yeah, yeah, yeah. where like right now being realistic I was I'm like you know it still doesn't seem real like oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, still mad yeah, about yeah. it but it's so much stuff that came out of mm -hmm. his passing like yeah. like I said like I got my movie mm -hmm. working on sets Got my own apartment. It was so much good things that yeah. came out of it that I would love for him to see. For sure. But it's just like because of what we was able to share throughout the last few years mm -hmm. and what he instilled in me, yeah. I'm able to carry that on and like you know live the life that I'm supposed to live that he wanted me to live. Yeah, so for sure. Fast. you know just yeah. taking it day by day, yeah, and yeah. it it made me be more uh, vulnerable and open. Yeah. You know trusting yeah. people again because like he was the only person I'm really talking to. Mm -hmm. So now that he's gone, besides prayer, I have to be able to be vulnerable with you know my yeah. girlfriend or my mom or just anybody else because it's like shoot. So you and you and your dad had that tight connection. You could whatever go on. You can just go to him. And Man, I can call him whatever time. Like yo, dad, I just fucked up. <laughs> I <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, I <laughs> No, you knew that conversation too. Like, hey man, it's real. <laughs> For sure. Heck yeah, I already know, boy. But no, that's dope. And then, like I said, hey, that dude probably opened your mind. Like, all right, I got to start, you know what I'm saying, put a little trust in somebody. Because, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, this person I was going to for advice when it was with women or with life or, you know what I'm saying, it's gone. So now I got to find that person not to take his spot, but just somebody I can, you know. Because yeah. you need people to talk to, bro. Hey, you need people to put you in your place too. Because mm -hmm. this fool put me in my place so many times, though. I'll be complaining about my wife, like, dog, she want me to spend all this money. And he be on the phone, like, nigga, like, what you, you crying? You know, you crying like, you know what? Like, you crying a little bro, bitch. He sounds just like my man's Corey, though. Like, for real. Like, I'll be like, bro, she did this. He's like, niggas. That's it. That's it. <laughs> bro, if you don't calm down, it's like a regular woman. I'm like, I mean, still, though. It's just, he was yeah, like, man. listen. You just gotta choose the one that you want to be irritated for sure. with. For no, real. fast, fast. Once you can live with somebody, like the pandemic really showed me. Okay, my wife is cool. I can be with her around her. We around each other every day. I think I had whole time we was only frustrated with each other for like a week. That's just because we was tired of being in the house. Like, damn, we can't do nothing. <laughs> like, we had this mother playing Uno all day. You know, like, man, watching movies. Like, that's why I got McGraw L, bro, because of that. And like all the Detroit movies, I wasn't mm -hmm. really watching Detroit movies until the pandemic. Cause so I was trying to find something to fulfill my time. Mm -hmm. Now you was on BMF, man. You was at the stand and stuff like that, man. Serving up what was hot dogs. Yeah, now we uh we serving uh hot dogs. Went to uh serving them bricks now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hot, hot dog what experience was that, man. Like I said, Fifty Cent, the director. You got uh you know what I'm saying everybody on set that was a part of the whole mm -hmm. real life BMF and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like how was that? You know what I'm saying even though it was a small role, that was that was big. Yeah. So like the difference from last year, this year it was um I was able to be more a part of just the different process so like in this year i'm a part of the freeway rick rocks crew okay so um they get they put me in a mink yeah, yeah, yeah. i ain't gonna yeah, lie smoke, they put yeah. me in a mink i'm like oh it's how y'all was feeling back in the day so yeah. but no i was just um last year i was happy to be there but this year i was like all right let me see who i can rub shoulders with For sure. and kind of connect with so i was yeah. able to get some um some like the Producers, the ADs, talk mm -hmm. to one directors, talk mm -hmm. to some of the set designers, mm -hmm. and if people in general see like, okay, how can I get here next yeah. year? Yeah, hey, those connections is important. Making those connections, like you out Man. there, if you ain't bumping shoulders with nobody, like you waste uh -huh. your time. Because I talked to some of the new people that's actually on season two, yeah, and they gave me some advice like, all right, cool, you know, 
this is some of the things that I went through, mm -hmm. books that I've read, some of the um, classes I've took mm -hmm. to get to where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, sometimes people don't want to get information. Mm -hmm. So I was happy for with sure. anything they gave me and stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, it's crazy that you brought up me. You know, we gonna get to that pretty soon. As far as like your writing, directing skills, and acting, mm -hmm. I'm trying to be third number two, man. <laughs> That's all I want to. <laughs> Whenever I've been telling everybody who been on this, who been in the movie thing, man, Thomas Harris, man, everybody, man. If you want a spot. And me just be like, hey man, put that shit down. That's me. I'm put that shit down, man. Dog. <laughs> I'll have a gun. Nigga, tell him. Put that shit, like, put it down. Hell yeah. God, damn. <laughs> That's it. That's it, dog. That's God, it. Damn. If you need a roll, he put edges on that shit. Hell yeah. I've been, I've been waiting for this. Hell yeah, dog. So third number two. Thug at the bus stop, dog. Hey, that's me, bro. Hit me up, man. Shout out, man. Hey, y'all. Got you. What up? Now, uh, real talk before we get to everything else, man. Mother's Day coming around, man. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, I lost my mom at what twenty twelve, so you know that day can be it'd it be tough. But after a while, you get through it. Mm -hmm. But what's like what's the most important thing that you learned from your mom, man? Since like being an adult, because you know when you we young, our parents tell us stuff we don't listen. You then can't. We, we you, get can't older. you can't fault them for what they didn't know. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. Like I realized that yes, my mom, but they still learn life. That's how we learn life for sure. And yeah. their time was different than our time and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've been learning just to accept my mom for who she is mm -hmm. and just love her through it for yeah, real. Yeah. Cause she, you know, everybody got them problems and stuff. Like you like, sure. my mom always tripping, irritated, yeah. tripping, man. <laughs> like she had caught me, like, she had called me at six, seven in the morning. Yeah. So I have like, I'm like, hello, <laughs> you sleep? I'm like, <laughs> no, nah, I'm just awake at six <laughs> o'clock in the morning wanting to have a full blown yeah, conversation. Sure. Yeah. But you know, just those moments, just like, you know what? I'm gonna just let her be and just mm -hmm. appreciate her because mm -hmm. you know me losing my dad's like okay cool yeah. I can't really be nitpicking for yeah, it it's no, kind of like no, like kinda... you know what this is my mom appreciate her stuff even though she does irritate yeah. me I still love her yeah. though so how she get how she um got through the whole thing with your, with your you when know, they together it, no they weren't together but oh, yeah. because you know of course they had children my brother he has autism and stuff yeah, I was gonna so, so yeah. um they were just getting back on good terms or whatnot sure. so it, kinda, it just threw everybody off yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, for sure. Now, man, my wife, her um, her little brother uh, um, has a mild case of uh, autism, mm -hmm. and uh, I know last month was Autism Awareness Month, mm -hmm. and um, she got a cousin that's like full blown, like you know, what I'm saying he he have to stay with um his uh his uh mom and dad, right, right. which is her uh her aunt, whatever older older, older couple, and like I know with with, uh, with him everything gotta be like in a form, like, everything gotta be like planned out uh, with him when you leave. And you gotta let them know, like, listen, we gonna hey, uh, we gonna be back at nine forty five. Cause mm -hmm. y'all not back by nine forty five is a problem. Like, he gonna address it. Like, hey, we supposed to be. You said we are gonna be at the crib. Like, <laughs> so when you come and knock on the door, and before you enter the door, you gotta ring the doorbell. It's like certain things you gotta do to keep him. You know, what I'm saying, calm and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Where little brother, uh, he he more so. You know, ain't nothing really. He like things to be the same way or whatever. So how is it with you know that's your twin brother? Mm -hmm. Like how how is it um with him like growing up? Did you understand what he was going through or? Honestly, I just saw him as a normal person. Only thing sure. I, I want to say was him. It was just the retention and kind of like breaking things down for mm -hmm. real. But really, yeah, just that nigga normal. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, it should be little bro, things. Yeah, like because yeah. he 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 knows his emotion. He knows that's mm -hmm. what it is. It's like basically expressing mm -hmm. those things and trying to communicate. That's yeah. the biggest thing. So it's just that. Cause right now he loves video games. For sure. This dude actually created a video game that they're trying to publish right now. Oh, so that's dope. So it's kind of like you put him in what he wants to do. Yeah, he, he gonna he do good. that shit. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, what's yeah. it called? That nigga be getting the hoes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> like he put the Mac down on like the smooth. Like he'll just like slide in. Yeah. Be like what you doing? Yeah, for sure. What's this? Oh, I like this. Yeah. We can do this together. Yeah, type yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so like dog really like. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. really normal just like i realized that really is just when we put when i take him um out places with me and then mm. basically treat him as i would treat my regular friends mm -hmm. he responds the same way so For if sure. you don't like something he'll let you know like yeah i'm gonna go over here but <laughs> i ain't, I ain't really messing with this or he'll just be quiet yeah and if he's interacting interact For in sure. his own way For sure. and i like that all my friends accept him who he is because yeah. i I let everybody know. Listen, the quickest way to get cut into or to <laughs> get like, like you know some shit popping yeah. is mess with him. That's what I was about to say. I know you probably growing up like overprotective, like you know what I'm saying. Hey, but when we grew up, it was definitely the other way around. Yeah, like anybody mess with him, yeah. and mess with me. Yeah, he only hit. Bro, it was like first <laughs> or second grade, cause yeah. like my dad, he was a pastor and stuff. So 
I was more shelter young. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to fight. I wouldn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. This, I had this little kid that was bullying me, and my, my brother found out about it. Mm. Bro, this nigga walked up the dog. Like, you ever, like, you know, on site? <laughs> yeah, it was sure. on, on site. site. It was yeah. no talk here, nothing, man. It's like, pink. Yeah. Don't mess with my brother, and walked away. And that was it. And yeah. I was like, sheesh. Yeah. And I don't know about what it is about autistic kids. Be strong. Damn, it's strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about I say, yeah, for sure, because her cousin, that nigga, uh, uh, yeah, he's strong. Man, because we wrestled when he was younger. Yeah. <laughs> Got the extra muscle, boy. <laughs> <laughs> After the few times, I was like, bro, square up. I know you can't fight for real, yeah. but like grappling, oh, I was, yeah. it was the, oh. I, he put you in the crossfade chicken wing. And, 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 <laughs> dang, man. That's, a, you know, that's what's up, though, man. Like I say, man, I know, this is me and my wife, she a pre-K teacher. I know it's different, you know what I'm saying, different levels of it and mm -hmm. stuff like You know what I'm saying? But uh, talk about you, bro. Growing up, I want to know, you know, east side, west side. Who was in the household? You know, saying how how it was as a little little Michael man. Sure. So, grew up East Side, East Side, uh, East Jeff and Chalmers area. Oh yeah, you in the hood? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I was over here. I stayed there for a little bit, man, on Newport. <laughs> yep, I was right there. Um, my grandma stayed on Chalmers, and I was like all the way back on like the Dickerson area by yeah, the park. Yeah, by the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dog, you right there by the apartments in that school. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I was over there on Newport, right over there. Dog. Yep. My my uh, what's it called? One of my closest friends. She stayed on there for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but uh. Grew up there. Um, my mom remarried when I was seven and stuff. So mm -hmm. I had my step pops, her, mm -hmm. and then my brother in the crib, and then my step pops had two kids. So okay. like in the summer they'd be there and stuff. But y'all cool, like you know, sometimes yeah, we, it could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got closer when we was like older though. Okay, so like I sure. want to say maybe when I hit like seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. That's when we really got like, really started messing because it was no bad blood. But it's mm -hmm. like you know, you OT. Yeah. I'm in the city, so it's kind of like all right. For it's sure. like your friends coming over like a little ten <laughs> yeah. period of time yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah. But um. The one thing like how I was raised, like my step pops, he never like physically disciplined me. Mm -hmm. He just make me feel dumb by saying a bunch of big words and <laughs> yeah, sentences. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like sure. I get in trouble and he'll use an over enunciated se sentence <laughs> saying that shit to me. I'm looking at him like, bro, what the fuck Duh, you what say to about? me, yeah, bro? Yeah, sure. yeah. He just look like, go look it up in dictionary. Yeah. And I'll be pissed. I don't even, bro, I don't even know what you said. Yeah, and so you want me to look this yeah, up in the dictionary, bro? <laughs> Sure. But it helped me out in the future though. Yeah. So it helped me be able to be diverse in different areas mm -hmm. and hold my own weight mm -hmm. to people that think that I'm not literate yeah, or sure. uh, have a very extensive vocabulary. Because yeah. usually people talk to you like, oh, you actually know what this word means? Are you saying this? Like, oh, yeah, 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 I do. And then another thing he did was he had like a, a plethora of watches, cologne, and like clothes and yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I got into my fashion. Yeah, I saw I said, him. Oh, yeah, I peep, man. You be he, on your smooth man, <laughs> he stepped into the room. Before you see him, you smelled him. Yeah. I'm like, bro, like, what the hell you got yeah, on? Sure, yeah. So I would start like stealing his cologne and stuff, yeah. his watches. Like he had this one Gucci watch. I, I went to Cass. Man, I, and then if he ever watched this, he's probably gonna be like, "I knew, I knew you were stealing my shit, Duh. bro." He had a Gucci watch, and then he had this Dolce and Gabbana cologne, and he had a Gucci belt. He was on it. <laughs> Cause he was always he was always go out of town for like a trip, or whatever. Yeah. So I go to school, flashiest nigga ever. Duh. As soon as three fifteen hit, I'm speeding yeah, home. Yeah, 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 boy, right back there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I put it right back there. Yeah. I'm like, all right, so I can definitely steal my stuff, brother stuff, dog. Hand me down like oh you got the knowledge shit you wore yesterday I'm, I'm here today nigga <laughs> <laughs> now nah, he uh he gave a thumbs down man because he went to King man ah so you know what I'm saying that's a bad choice <laughs> <laughs> hey, man what year you graduate cash uh, I graduated in fourteen. 14 okay okay yeah cash man they got that that uh good ass gym in there man <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, see I went to top so I can't say nothing to none of y'all <laughs> <laughs> it's all good so you know you say, so you say uh step pops in the crib man so mm -hmm. y'all always had a good relationship that's what's up because you never really you know sometimes we our moms get with a new dude we don't really rock one for mm -hmm. no reason just yeah, cause, yeah. Hey, my dad you know what I'm saying yeah, he, never he, had was, that. he was just always he like he let me I guess get comfortable with him. Mm -hmm. So like he never forced anything. He just like I'm always I'm here for you. For sure. For and after sure. a while, you know, I grew to it because yeah. you know I'm, I still have my dad. So there'll be times where I'm like, this nigga doing more, this nigga doing yeah, more. But yeah, then yeah. after a while, I'm like, okay, I'm appreciate both who they are. Yeah. Because it was one thing. I remember I wanted some trues, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I was I was like, yo pops, can you uh give me some trues? He was like, 
nigga, the fuck is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I told him, I showed him what it was. He was like, you want me to pay $180 for, sure, for, some, for jeans. some jeans on your ass and you're not paying no bills? Man, Man you better go get a job Man, or something. So that's like the first thing of me like hustling for us. So yeah. I cast, we ain't had no vending machines. I still don't know why I don't have no vending machines. Yeah, damn, that's They crazy. had no vending machines, nothing, no snacks. They had like the healthy stuff. <laughs> so me, I'm like, you know what, bet. I brought the Kool-Aid, I brought for the chips, sure. brought Hell, the yeah. snacks. You the man. And then I played baseball and I was in theater. So I knew the loophole. So like, all right, cool. After school, I bring in my uh my batting uh what's it called bag and stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then in the theater department, as long as I broke her off some stuff, yeah, I put it in that room. Yeah, you smooth. We was good. Man. So people came to me every day. Like I was making at least fifty a day. Yeah. So you making two fifty a week yeah, at like good. fifteen, sixteen with no bills, funds. But you, yeah, you bought trues in the t-shirt, bro. <laughs> you would have thought you would have thought I really was one person on BMF Be enough, playing this coke yeah. in that school, <laughs> bro. Some, uh, baseball, uh, man. Baseball Dog. That baseball bag That boy long Bro you know yeah Cause you got your bash You got your gloves, gloves And everything yeah. else. Man you couldn't man. tell me nothing Damn man why, what, 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 you, you play baseball What's your opinion As far as like Why you don't think There's enough black kids That wanna play baseball Like it is in football And basketball man because it's slow and boring. Yeah, that's, that's really it. It's yeah. like you can. That's really what it. When you play it, shit lit. Yeah. But watching it, oh, it's boring as hell. Yeah, and you if you don't know what's going on, you're looking like, especially on, like, some people appreciate no hitter. Yeah. Other people are like, bro, can y'all hit the yeah, ball? Yeah, like, bro, action, bro, I'm watching this stuff. Strike. Yeah. All right. Strike. <laughs> All right. God damn. Yeah, well, somebody yeah. gonna do something for sure. So that's why. And then yeah. like you know. But you get a bad uh, being a baseball player, exactly. and you be around for a minute. You be Albert Pujols. Yo, forty one, forty two. Yo, yo bag coming out is stupid, dumb, crazy. I was hurt as hell when they told me I couldn't make it to the league in college. Duh. And they was like, <laughs> bro, because I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm 6'2". Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in real life, I'm only like 5'7". Yeah, I was going to have you when you came down here, man, because everybody be taller than me, dog. I was like, damn, finally somebody this bitch my height, dog. <laughs> bro, so I went to the uh, the training, well, the uh, tryouts for my, I went to, went like, uh, Western freshman year. Yeah. Man. I was the shortest motherfucker Duh, there. And not only was I short, I was the smallest Smaller motherfucker yeah, there. Like that so I'm man. looking at everybody else. Bro, because like your power comes from your core and yeah, your leg. For sure. I don't got that much leg. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when they telling you like, pull left, pull right, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Man. And then what's it called? Castle's really known for their football. So for they sure, wasn't yeah, putting yeah. money into baseball. Yeah, so yeah, we switched yeah. our baseball coach. It's like, the little exposure we was getting yeah. wasn't doing nothing, wasn't helping nothing. So yeah, it was yeah. like, if I ain't make it at Western, I was like, well, yeah, it's a help. it was good. Ah, what yeah. the fuck am I about to do now? Yeah, man. Yeah. Now, now, would you at chaos when my man was there, man? Uh, Jew. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy, bro. That that, that boy was a beast. Yeah. Like in football, then that one little situation. Man. Yeah, we man, we used to love going to them games. Like yeah. especially that one season, we was like undefeated. I was like. Whew. Yeah. Man, because yeah, well, he was uh, had offers from Alabama, Michigan mm -hmm. State, like. But that's when you, hey, man, one moment could change everything, bro. Mm -hmm. And that changed everything. I mean, he still got his life back together and play affairs and play, you know what I'm saying? He still did, did his thing, but it's crazy how that one thing altered everything else, you feel mm -hmm. me? So, now, man, we always, you know, everything is, is music-wise, man. Like, everything play, music play a part in your life yeah. in a lot of ways. You with your stepdad, you with your, your real dad, your mom. Who were some people that you was liking just based off of them? Uh, music, R&B, rap, whatever. The first Thing that I got introduced to and I don't know if it was from my mom I don't know who it was I heard Michael Jackson mm -hmm. I went through a whole phase of just going through his whole discovery yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like bro this dude is nice hell yeah he was yeah I guess that's what made me lean more towards the R&B opposed to rap yeah for sure so Michael Jackson was the first person I got introduced to yeah. and then I think after that was Chris Brown yeah now Chris Brown, the man, dog. And yeah. I see on Shade Room, all three of his baby mamas shot them all. I'm like, and he's doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> and he all, dog, two of them look, look, look just like Karuchi, too. I'm like, oh, you got a thing. <laughs> I, think, I think everybody has a type. Like, no, for everybody sure. Everybody has yeah, a type. I'm starting to see, like, I like the, you know what I'm saying? I like the dark skinned ladies. Like, growing yeah, up, I always. Like I like, like them brown skin, like slim thick. Yeah, like yeah, everybody yeah, say, you look the, you date the same woman. I'm like, no, I don't. They have yeah. different names. <laughs> <laughs> See, man, I like I'm like him, man. Like I had my first little girlfriend was light skinned. Then I just got darker and darker. Like, man, forget you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Forget this, dog. I'm good on you light skinned girls, dog. It ain't no racist stuff. It's just Hang like on. I just that's my that was my preference. I did all you know all of them. Just never had no never had no white girl ever. Yeah, never. And I don't think my mom and dad would be like they, they wouldn't approve of it. But I ain't gonna lie, I was always like a little bit afraid. I'm like you know what, bro? If I fuck up one time, I'm going to jail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like you see that one meme where it's like, hey, yo, come here, come with me. I'm going to jail. All right, man, that's a bet. That's a bet. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, but no, Chris Brown's a man though, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I mess with Chris Brown, Michael Jackson for sure. When I yep. was younger, I used to get good pork rides, and that was my reward. Like, give me a Michael Jackson CD or something. Like. That's what's up. Oh, and then after all that, Ti, I was a big Ti fan. T- like, see, people don't show Ti enough love, dog. Man, when Ti came out, like I was like the uh, Ti versus Tip, yeah. Urban Legend. All yeah, this stuff he was sure, doing, yeah. I was like, bro, shit hard as yeah. hell. And I was like, I can't wait till I get a car to blast yeah. this. Hell yeah. And you talk about that vocabulary. That boy gonna say some shit, dog. Like, yeah. <laughs> Man. Was that podcast expeditiously? But he said he 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 ain't really like doing the podcast, John. Wasn't no money in it. Yeah, he's trying to do like what's it called? Stand up now. <laughs> yeah. You need to go back to a dictionary type stuff. Man. So. <laughs> but hey, when you got the money, I guess, you know, you could just go ahead and start trying some junk, dog. Might as well. I ain't mad at it. So uh, I know you probably your uh, first favorite artist then it had to be Michael Jackson then for you then growing up. Mm-hmm. Now what's something, bro, that you want to do? Coming up, that you was too embarrassed to tell some people, dog. Like now, like it was like 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 I tell everybody, man. I always gotta give an example. I wanted to be a tap dancer when I was like, you know, what I'm saying nah. I wanted to be a karate person. Like, I wanted to be a karate kid and shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what's some junk that you wanted to be? As like, nigga, you wanted to be that? I always wanted to dance. I ain't gonna lie. When I saw Stump the Yard, or you got stuck. <laughs> 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 Man, man, I ain't gonna lie. Hell yeah, especially that nigga did that slide with the arm. man. Duh. I'm like, let me just figure out how to do a little something. Man, I got a story about that. I think it was. I was. <laughs> I, was I had this program. I was in. I was in. Uh, it's called Math Core, or whatever. I think I was maybe between ten to fourteen. One of them ages. I don't know. That's the wide ass gap. I know. <laughs> but listen up. So I had a girlfriend. During that time, and we had these road calls, like these more like more than like you know rituals we did just to get the you know day started, or whatever. So on Thursday we had the road calls. So everybody get hyped, they start <laughs> dancing, right? And you like you said, you like I wanted to be a dancer, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like, hey yo, Eric, you know when you little, they be hyping you up, and she's like, oh yeah, you can dance, you can dance. So it's like, come on, do in the front. I'm like, bet. Yeah. So I start crumping. I'm thinking, I I'm, knew about say crump. I'm, you know, I start feeling myself, right? No bullshit. I, you know how you can always see that person you're not supposed to see? I saw my <laughs> girlfriend, right? She did this. She was like... <laughs> yeah, she got embarrassed as hell. <laughs> no he think he hit me too. <laughs> no bullshit, bro. After the announcement, she came to me. She was like, I ain't gonna lie. We got to break up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn. Your crunking was horrible, dog. Hey, I, like, I knew he was gonna say crunk. I knew it, dog. Like, I just knew it, dog. I was looking at the age. <laughs> this nigga was definitely crunking that boy. <laughs> Chris Brown was hitting that your hard that stuff to you. <laughs> dog, that's funny as hell, dog. I always want to know how, I wish I could dance too. I had a moment like that, man. I was at the uh, at dance. I was going crazy. And then everybody was laughing at me. I was like, all right, I ain't never danced again. Exactly. <laughs> Ever in my life. And now everybody want to hustle and shit. If you, if you can do it now, everybody, really? you the man. man. I wish I, I can't do that. I can, man, I can do everything but to me a hustle. There's oh, too many shoot. turns and bounces. Man, and man. during the pandemic, my wife was trying that jump so hard. She do, she learned every one besides that one. Can't. I try to learn with her. I'm like, I got two left feet. Nigga. And <laughs> two cricket left feet, too, at that. Hell yeah. Like, that, that's <laughs> exposed. You do one bad, one wrong move. They over here and you over there looking stupid like, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Dog, that's funny as hell, man. This dude said he was crunking girlfriend's life. No, nope. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I thought you was cool. You ain't, you, no, we good. thought you was part of the game, man. <laughs> yeah. Now, before your, your acting, man, would you, um, into this cooking thing, man. Before that, man, everything just I, happened. Everything just happened. So like, I see you, you, you and your cook bag, man. Like yeah. talk about, talk so, about that. I was a broke college student, man. and I was hungry as hell. So one of my <laughs> one of my home girls, she made a um chicken and steak alfredo, yeah. and that boy was busting. You sound good right now. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, teach me how to make it. Yeah. She was like, all right, bet I got you. So she taught me how to um do it, and then I started doing it, started playing around the dance, and all this shit mm-hmm. good. And like I said. I had that hustling entrepreneur spirit young. Yeah. So everybody was always saying, it's nothing to eat in Kazoo. It's sure. nothing to eat in Kazoo. I'm yeah. like, shit. Damn. I ain't got a job. <laughs> yeah. I ain't trying to get a job out in here, yeah. but I can cook. Yeah. And no matter what's going to happen, niggas going to pay to eat. For sure. Hell yeah. So I, I was like, bro. So I'm like, let me just try it out. So I had a few people come over and taste the food to make sure I was good enough because yeah. I ain't trying to like, yeah, 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 yeah. everybody know. 
You can try my food, but if it's bad, you're never going back. Hell it don't. No. Pa- it don't matter Hell how much how much better they get. <laughs> you ain't never going. You back. ain't going. Nah, that nigga. That one time he burnt the mat, <laughs> yeah. and that yeah, shit was brown sure. when it was supposed to be yellow. Yeah, nah. For sure. So I did that with a couple of my homies. They helped out and whatever. Mm. And as time just progressed, I just started meeting more people to help me. So like, met my mentor. His name is Vince. He got his own stuff right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he taught me how to make my sauce from scratch. He was like, listen, this is going to separate you. Man, you for real, then. If yeah. you do this from scratch, that's your own flavor. And yeah. like, duplicate it. Yeah. And then you already got your seasoning. So when you do that, you're going to have them forever. For sure. Then my other, um, my unk, uh, Dre, he um he was a part of views and everything. Okay. And then he also started his new stuff with Pizza Cap. Yeah. So he was showing me stuff as well too. Yeah. So between him yeah. and him, it was just like I couldn't lose. Mm-hmm. And my food just started just And it all came from the uh from the Alfredo. The, all because of the Alfredo. So before that you wasn't you never was into like cooking and whatever. I can do one thing, bro. I, I can do toast and eggs and I can do <laughs> <laughs> and I can do the pre-made stuff, put on the skillet and make think like yeah, different yeah, stuff. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the king of that. Yeah, but other than that, <laughs> no, I couldn't do nothing. Like my, literally, I want to say a year before I burnt or over seasoned some chicken <laughs> and my roommates was like, bro, I don't know what you doing. Yeah. Like we was, one thing, when I used to smoking everything, we'd get high yeah. and we would fry some pizza rolls. That, yeah. was, that was our... <laughs> Fried pizza rolls, no, That was our thing. So for me, in Greece, yeah, like, bro, I'm trying. To- <laughs> I know. Hey, I was I was that one the oven. Like, oh, what's it, bro? When I tell you, when you high, you do a lot of. Duh, shit. I'm, trying to, yeah, I'm trying to think. Like how that way, but that's a crush on the mom. That shit was that's good a, as hell. Duh. Oh my fried god, bro. I'm surprised my brother ain't never tried that. We was that. banging them hoes. So Man. went from that. To making full gourmet meals and getting paid for it is just like yeah. you would have never seen it coming. Like, Duh. bro, you really was who yeah. it's night and day type shit. So, so I know you say you got a lady and stuff. What's your uh, what's your go to dish if you trying to like, impress her? Like, what's man, the- she she don't eat no meat. Oh, dang. so I gotta do whatever I do. Like, she she loves the pasta though. Okay, that's like sure. one thing she will eat. So I just do like a vegetarian pasta, or yeah. I might do a. Um, a mushroom based dish like it just depends like she yeah. does like eggplant parm not too long ago or sure. some other stuff so I gotta experiment with her is that but... hard like with y'all when y'all eating like at the, at the crib and so you want some chicken wings man listen <laughs> so at first it was cause when we first started talking she was eating meat yeah. so it was easy mm-hmm. but then I like I come back home and she's like yeah I don't eat meat no more I'm like like damn, we ain't gonna switch up. <laughs> like the fuck, we was just we was just eating lamb chops yeah. and potatoes. Now for you sure. eating plants and dirt and shit. <laughs> no, like, for sure, for sure. Definitely so grass. It was definitely like a switch, but yeah. I didn't got used to it because I ain't, she she makes some stuff. You be like, oh, this is actually pretty kind of good. So listen, man, when when my dog when he finally get this dang cooking show popping off, dog, <laughs> got coming well, cook one of them boys, dog. We can do that. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be dope, man. Now, man, fast forward, man. You know, you, you say you went to Western and stuff like that, graduated rest, Western. Congrats on that, man. Appreciate it. A lot it. of people don't make it through, man. You know, <laughs> I spent a, I spent a while a good two months in college and stuff. If my mom and my dad didn't stop me, I would have just dropped out of my sophomore year. I was like, bro, fuck this shit. Yeah. shit ghetto as hell. Man, <laughs> yeah, dog. school would be a mud, dog. But I, I salute everybody who went that boy and, you know what I'm saying, did their thing, whatever. And with the name, E. Michael, you you ever had rap dreams? Or, or singing dreams? This is like a, a, a mm-hmm. artist name, like E. Michael album coming out. I see yeah, you right now. I think everybody at least was started because one of <laughs> one of my old friends, um, he, he was doing music a lot. And he, uh, I think he still does it. Um, Cause we don't we don't talk that much, but I still like you know appreciate his grind and stuff that he's doing. Mm-hmm. So I know he's still doing music and stuff. But when I saw him doing it, cause dude sounded great, and I was yeah. like, bro, this shit, this shit yeah. live. Yeah, I sure. can do this. Yeah. I think he let me in the studio one time. <laughs> told you to come back. <laughs> he, he looked at me. You know your friends be like, hey, hey, all right, bet. I promise you, when I Duh. left, we are never letting the studio ever again. <laughs> that was the worst shit we didn't ever do. Oh man. Grand but I'm closing, glad I'm man, glad he didn't closing. let me do that. I'm glad he didn't let me no, do that. No, for sure. Some people need not to rap, though. You need more friends like that, man, because niggas be trying to rap just because you like you said, your homeboy is sweet. All right, I'm gonna yeah. do it too. And then they don't ever tell him, like, listen, it's not good. Isn't bro, facts. It's okay. Like it's he okay. was he was able to do rap. And sing, oh, so yeah, he, he was, he was versatile. Worlds. Like one yeah. of his best songs was like, he uh he freaked Pony, yeah. and I was like, bro, that shit hard as hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna do that shit. He was like, no, no, just don't do it. Just don't you do ain't it. come back, dog. Don't come back, dog. Go ahead, cook, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, man, after man, growing up, like, mm-hmm. like 
when did the acting bug hit you? Like, or you know, I know you said you was in you know theater and cast and stuff yeah, like that. So it hit me. I got there sophomore year. Okay. So it hit me sophomore year, and um, it was one of the spaces where you was able just to be yourself and be free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the people there was real dope. Everybody wanted the same thing, so I just liked the environment. Mm-hmm. But I didn't get any any lead roles and stuff. So I probably got one like secondary lead role, but that was it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I tried out for one of the exclusive uh, departments for acting, but mm-hmm. I didn't make it. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, I had like a grudge. I was like, "Y'all niggas gonna pay? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this shit." But like, that's sure. how I felt when I was younger and stuff. Yeah. Um. I really wanted to prove to people that I was worth what people didn't see. For sure, fast. And uh, when I went to school, mm-hmm. I was like, when I get done with my degree, I'm going to go back to the theater or film in some type of way. Yeah. Um, because I wasn't confident in myself initially mm-hmm. to go to school for it. Because yeah. everybody, you know, your parents when you're young, like they want something to have more security. Yeah, for sure. And for sure. With you can everybody knows with the film and theater, it's not instant security. Mm-hmm. So I went with that. But with my major being PR and marketing, I think that helped me a little bit more mm. for me actually writing my own film to sure. get into that publicity role, the marketing, and have people help me out, have a yeah. hand in it and whatnot. Because yeah, yeah, afterwards, yeah. after that, I always was writing. Yeah. I never stopped writing. Yeah, for sure. It was just the fact that I didn't really know how to scope it. And the yeah. pandemic actually helped. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it helped yeah. a lot. I took some classes, like a master class, and just did research and whatnot. Mm. And like you said, we had, we had nothing but time. Yeah, yeah so yeah. <laughs> we had nothing yeah, but time. Sure. Learn and I was sure. by myself. Like, my roommate, he went back home to his mom's. Yeah. So I had five months in the crib yeah, just by like, myself. Yeah. And with the first episode that I released, my dad saw it, and he, he hated it. Yeah. He was like, I see what you're trying to do, yeah, but, but that's not true. It ain't there, though. That's not, that's not true. Yeah. I know you can do better. I know what you're trying to do. What mm. I was trying to do was get the immediate reactions and feed to what, like, what you know, people, what people, people, what people, people like, wanted, yeah, like, yeah. you know? And they like that, the high, high, high toxicity, like all that mm-hmm. uh, stuff that's Love going on right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when he said that, I was like, damn, I don't want to put out something that's my people not gonna be proud of yeah for sure so I, t- I went back and was like all right i can either stay in my own ways be prideful and be like you don't know what you're talking about mm-hmm. or listen and say you know what let me take some steps back let me see it how can i make it better yeah, and that's sure. what i did i yeah. made it better throughout the whole five months and yeah. things start falling in line and yeah, yeah. The rest is history. That's what's up, man. Now I had your, uh, your, your 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 movie, Baby Mama, on, on the last episode. <laughs> I saw. It. Yeah, Leah I Anthony, saw. It. <laughs> Shout out I watched that jump, man, because um I know my homeboy was in the uh uh Real Will, mm-hmm. and then Jay Judo was in there and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I'm like, let me go ahead and see what this is about, man. And um got the little two B average jump. I'm like, damn, that's a bad situation to be in, bro. Yeah. Like, start questioning a little junior, junior, what <laughs> junior, and I'm all like. <laughs> Now, if you was in a real life situation like that, bro, because I, I, I got I got three kids. I got a fifteen year old, I got a five year old, and I got a one year old. Big mm-hmm. ass gaps. But <laughs> but like if I really if one of them wasn't mine, bro, that'd be hard to walk away from that situation. It, it, va- like, it backs, and then like in my character, he's like seven years. Yeah. So you got seven years with a little person that ain't even yours. Exactly. It's just kind of like exactly you in a messed up situation because like yeah, I it is like right for me to leave yeah, because yeah, it ain't mine yeah, but, but then it's, it's still wrong because it's like well you're all you have yeah for sure so it's kind of like do you do what's best for you for the yeah. little dude especially yeah. the way his mama was yeah, in the movie sure. like she, was, yeah, she made you hair a little bit now. <laughs> <laughs> like, how you ain't shit leave <laughs> man like but i don't know i only know what i do in that situation for That's I, think, hard. I think just where i'm at now yeah, you went that mother and cussed out your mama. Like, Why you got this nigga picture on? You feel me? Like I, I, don't know, I think I think I would take care of little 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 dude. Yeah, just have a conversation when we get older and stuff. Understand? Oh, yeah. He not gonna do like Dad, open the door. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, this your son still? Like, oh my god! No, those those scenes was crazy. Like really, yeah. just doing it because like I had to really become numb to a yeah. lot of stuff that I just normally wouldn't do for sure for sure for sure now let me ask you this man like you got you got a lady man how hard is it working with other like attractive ladies because like when i on the show luckily before we got together uh this art stuff i was doing yeah i had to worry about <laughs> but i know it's going to be some turmoil in the future Cause we, we definitely talked about it 
Um, it's about yo, you was kissing her for real. And like, I think, was... and I think, as long as I keep as much communication sure, as possible, fast, fast. That's, that's I'll it. be. Yeah. It, I'll that's still key. probably get a look. Yeah, but it won't be that. Oh, so you was doing this? Yeah, for sure. Like for I, sure. I know she, the biggest thing is she just don't want to be blindsided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, you just let her know, give her a heads up, what's going on. Yeah. So it's just, and then we always said like. If it gets too much, yeah. she let me know because no, sure. like I can't blame her for it because like I feel a certain way. Yeah, like I you going to work and then especially <laughs> if it's an everyday type thing, yeah, you man. gotta kiss somebody every day and you gotta man. come back to me. Man, it's like you got your press all out. Like God, that's hard. <laughs> Facts. Because <laughs> I don't think about Lala when she had that one scene on Power, bro. Like. I'll be mad then when I know her and Melo ain't divorced yeah. by the time. I'm like, huh, oh, damn, you going in. And bro, seeing Lala in person, I was yeah. like, bro, you fine as hell. Man, I bet. Every I bet. time she said hi to me, she was like, hey, I was like, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, for sure. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Duh. Cause I know my wife, she, certain females be on the show, got their breasts all out. She's looking like, oh, she came with there with her breasts out. I'm like, mm -hmm. listen, I ain't tell her how I dress. She just came to the door <laughs> like that. Like, like, it's all good. Like, you was all up on her, huh? I'm like, man, go, go sit, <laughs> sit down somewhere, man. Now, with that, now you wrote. Star and direct um, uh, consequences. Mm -hmm. Like, like that's that's the project you was working on during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was. Um, I started that in 2017. Yeah. And at first, it was called Caught. Basically, the same same synopsis, mm -hmm. just different depth of different, the story yeah, and yeah. stuff. Uh, about how I used to be a sleeve yeah, for sure. in my uh, in my past life. Sleeves, you know, yeah. faithful black man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But, um, Ain't no cheating around here, man. But, um, yeah, it was just me going through and maturing, like, being a man and stuff. Yeah. Like, kind of learning uh, my own emotions, my own feelings, how women work for real. And mm -hmm. We try to release it in yeah. 2018, but my, my DP was like, bro, this shit trash. <laughs> Yeah, we hit for we, this shit, we not putting this out because he was like, my name attached to this too. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so he was like, we not doing that, bro. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, all right, babe, we can we we can um dial it back, and then like I said, went back to mm. re-sculpting, rewriting this stuff, mm. and going through different phases and different yeah. cast members. Because I swear, I had about six to seven different lead girls. Yeah. Everybody said they wanted to be an actor, yeah, but they don't sure. want to do no work and yeah, stuff. When yeah, it gets yeah. down to the nitty gritty, that's in anything. Everybody said they want to do something, Until it's time to but do don't it. nobody yeah. want to do the work. For sure, for sure. Like they we didn't, we didn't have like ten to twelve hour days minimum rehearsing, shooting, filming. Yeah. People like after that, like I can't do this no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Like, bro, we are now. It's like I was in so many predicaments. I'd like replace somebody mid shooting or find somebody else, yeah, and that gets yeah. postponing and postponing. I know for my next project is like you damn near got to sign NDA and your yeah, life yeah, over. It's yeah, like yeah, if you no. in this, I'm you in this. Hell if yeah. not, I am obligated to feel it, like just to take you out and not go to jail. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the next project you trying to work on, man? If you can give it out, right? yeah. Not, so, like, it's a few that um that I'm I'm looking at that people like you know uh, want me to direct and whatnot. But for my own personal thing, mm -hmm. uh, I got a, uh, a a story concept. Uh, it's called My Enemies, My Enemy. Okay. And I ain't gonna go too in depth because I don't sure. people like stealing the the yeah, concept yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But like, no, yeah, I, I, just, I, I just think talking. I think this this um this story is going to be 10 times better than mm. consequences and then it'll touch all different fa like you know mm. like faces of of what's going on because sure. i feel like a lot of people can relate to it and then i saw what i did in consequence and like all right cool because it was some things i was looking at i was like all right yeah. this got a little bit too wordy yeah. this was eh, yeah, yeah, i'm not gonna do this sure. better for sure for so sure. it's just it's like kind of like, like trial and error yeah. thing for the next it's one. always like that like I, I look at the first episodes a couple episodes of this podcast like damn I was a little stuck up. I wasn't losing just like that. Then mm -hmm. I got drunk. Damn, I got a little bit too. So I'm talking crazy. This nigga had to cut some shit out. Like, <laughs> that's, you know, that's why I haven't had, I used to like drink on the show. But then as I'm like, man, I'm talking crazy, bro. Like, I can't be, like my wife might go back and look at them episodes like this nigga crazy. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> now, um, man, what's your, what's your advice, man, for people who, like I said, want to get into the after business, man. They see it. Like you say, they don't want to put that, that time in. They don't know, like it take, it take hours within a day to go ahead and, and um and get things right like what's your advice to that person who just want to jump into it but don't know the the the, the, the you know saying what you really got to go through and just put some stuff out yeah. um because i still to this day at times struggle with the the perfectionist thing mm -hmm. where you want everything to be perfect because you're protecting your image oh, yeah, fast. Hell yeah. but 
what I've been learning through my journey is just put stuff out because you never know mm. who's going to see it. It's like, hey, I want to help you. For sure. Because that's what happened yeah. with, you know, my movie. Like, hey, I want to help you. Let me yeah. do this. Or I can take you there. Like the uh, one of the people that the producer and writer of Black Lives mm. helped me put consequences okay. on, t- on, on Tubi. Tubi. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's different things that you could be blocking yourself from because mm. you're afraid of what's going to happen. Okay. So I would just say, just do what you want to do and don't worry about what anybody else is going yeah, to think because everybody's yeah. going to have their opinion everybody's like oh this sucks it's you should do this but yeah, it's kind of yeah. like those people are the people that don't do anything for sure and, and for the people, most part yeah yeah that's a fact yeah so the people that does stuff they're going to look at it like all right cool i see potential in this mm-hmm. i can help but then you also got to be cognizant of help versus somebody trying to Put themselves in position, yeah, of, you for know, sure. You get stuff. the eating stuff, yeah. Get off on what you what you working hard mm-hmm. on. Like, oh yeah, that shit don't even be a part of that. <laughs> like, uh-huh. Yeah, you but get you... a lot of people. Like that. But then I, I I think about this like when you say like put it out, like, you get a lot of rappers that come on the show and they talk about music, but then like they never put nothing out. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it is be like, oh, I'm afraid to put something out because what people gonna say. I listened to the Roy and Maul podcast and they were saying like, if you're gonna do something, just do it. If you worry about what people gonna say, then that's already a sign that you shouldn't be even like. You mm-hmm. shouldn't be doing this if you all worry about the comments and niggas saying this whack. And sometimes I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I hit him up like, dog, you see that one comment? Like, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. you can't really trip about that. Cause... Cause it's like, it's so, and I was listening to a sermon about this. We choose to like pay attention to the wrong things. Oh, yeah, so you might have that one person that's saying this sucks, but we ignore the 500 yeah, other yeah, comments that say, yeah. this is dope. This exactly. helped me. This yada, yada, yada. We but because we're not getting a uh, 100% rate of positive reviews. Yeah. We want to steer away from it, but For it's sure. like we have to accept that we won't always please everybody. No, never. But what we're doing is for somebody. As long mm-hmm. as that somebody gets it, yeah, that's all good. that matters. Yeah, Cause yeah. Because you're doing what you're supposed to do in life. For sure. And when you're doing that, you don't know who you're helping because that could help somebody else become who they need to be. Yeah, fast, fast, man. Hell yeah, you talking some good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now, man, when it when it comes to um the acting stuff, man, I always ask this question, man. Like, is it um you subbing somebody you sub in for somebody mm-hmm. a classic movie one of your favorite movies what actor and role you would want to sub in for one of your favorite movies man you want to come in you want to take take their spot man denzel training day <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's a good role dog denzel <laughs> training. I'm, I'm quite sure it's one of your favorite movies then mm-hmm. but i'm like it took him so long and you know he even he, he ain't win no cameo war over that did he mm-hmm. That was that's just a, a hard, just a hard ass movie, yeah. Yeah, dog. Especially you how he went out. Yeah, especially when he went out. You dog. think you can do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> I have all your asses on you, looking motherfucking. <laughs> Bro, that joke from I'm talking about from the beginning to the end, dog. Yeah. I think the funniest part was Snoop Dogg in that wheelchair, though. <laughs> Rolling hey, you know, Snoop Dogg be having some of the wildest cameos. Duh, for you sure. see it, they see like, is that Snoop Dogg? Duh. Like, yeah, that's Snoop Dogg. Hell yeah, no, that's a, that's a, that's a dope movie. So you say Denzel Washington, huh? You mm-hmm. take his spot, man. Yeah, cause uh, what was the um? I take uh, I I be baby boy, man. Give me Tyrese role. <laughs> <laughs> you say I'm a mama. <laughs> That's my job. Or I'll be Vin Reigns. I just, I'm just, you know what I'm saying? When he was lit that nigga in the head like, call your mama. Got you. That's a classic movie, dog. People talk about how bad it is, though, but that's my shit, dog. Now, growing up, man, what, um, I might say growing up, no. Nah. What prepared you for your for your roles? Like, like, how do you, I'm quite sure you probably, you know, it's certain things that you wouldn't do mm-hmm. as far as a role. Like, what's something that you wouldn't do, and how do you prepare for a role that you do accept? Um... Roles that I just wouldn't do mm. is anything that's blatantly just violating all type of guy code for, sure. for like a woman. For yeah. Real. Yeah. like even that scene when I was choking uh uh Leah in Black <laughs> yeah. Lives. It this. took me <laughs> it took us literally an hour to yeah. do that. Because me naturally I'm like, bro, I I can't do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then it was funny, it was like, you ain't never I'm like Bro, no. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I never chose nobody. I was like, I was like, I don't get mad. I'm like, yeah. I never got to the point I want to where I'm just shit. like, on top. <laughs> <laughs> Choking her ass out real quick. Bro. So it took a minute. It was like, we not saying. It. I'm just saying. I'm like, well, yeah, this never. But yeah. there's anything like that because it's like it's certain things that I don't even want to put myself in the position to sure. even think about, like stuff for like sure. that. For sure. So stuff like that, but. How I prepare for a role yeah, is prepare when you get that script, man. Um, I look at the whole script in the entirety. Mm. And I guess this comes from me writing as well too. But I try to see what my motive is, the mm-hmm. background, and then try to develop different relationships with 
the characters while I'm reading it. Like, all right, cool. How would he react to this person? Like, through this script, is this person's relationship a positive one or a negative one? And then wherever the background or the the, uh, characteristics of my character, I try to correlate the two together Mm. to try to um, put some things in motion. Like, okay, cool. Let's try this. Let's do this. Because I want everything to be genuine. For sure, yeah, yeah. Because I want one of the, some of the best moments that we did on camera for Black Lives and Consequences was the one that was unscripted. Yeah. Because, um, in, in my work and then when I do my project people, I want them to really understand who their character is so they're not acting. Mm-hmm. To the point where it's like, this is, I can see myself being this person or I understand what this character was going through facts, because, yeah. If you're acting, you're not acting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, facts, facts. And it's just like you have to really become that person you have to be in that moment and say, "Okay, Eric wouldn't do this, yeah. but Carter would do this. Yeah, 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 but yeah. why would he do that?" Mm-hmm. And then same for like my other character, Michael and stuff. It's just like you really have to take yourself out of it and fully jump into yeah, that role yeah, in, that in that world, that yeah. universe, because it's a different universe. It's different things that's against him. Like for Carter, it's like. He had everything going for him. Yeah. And he put it on the back burner for a little dude that ain't his. <laughs> yeah, we a little joint. <laughs> so it's kind of like people was mad. Like, how can you leave him? It's like, well, shoot. He never had life. He never got a chance to experience life the way he wanted to live it. For sure. And it's like, you're a, a famous artist and you got like a seven figure job in yeah. Chicago. You put aside. Yeah. Why not at least experience it for a little bit? For sure. You know, yeah, so yeah. it's a different things you got to. Uh, put in mind, but just really trying to get the whole trajectory of what this world means. For sure. Hell yeah, man. Now, when it comes to sports, man, we study certain players, try to take pieces of a game and incorporate it in our game and stuff like that. You mm-hmm. know, if you're watching LeBron, you know, a lot of these can't do what he do, but <laughs> you're watching certain people, you're like, all right, let me go ahead and take a piece of this and mm-hmm. then put that junk into me. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> I had like the way that sound. <laughs> no. <laughs> Now with, uh, with you, man, who are some of those like actors that you might study just to, you know, saying get better at your craft? Um, it could be like local. I major. know. Local wise, I've been hitting up my man's Antoine, Antoine um, Jackson okay. a lot. He's been doing his stuff. Uh, he was on Narc, and uh, he's doing stuff with a lot of other police work right now. Mm-hmm. I think it was NVI or CB, something like that. Mm. Don't. Charges in my head, not my heart. <laughs> but uh, but other people but like I love Jordan Poole. Mm-hmm. No, not Jordan Poole. Peel. No, I'm thinking of the fucking Warriors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you said Jordan Poole. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, Jordan Peele. <laughs> this is like a few letters off. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but no, him, Issa Rae, and Fifty. Because I look at it, they say like they create a different um their own genre yeah, to a certain sure. extent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and that's what I wanted to mimic in my writing style. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to create my own style of writing where it's not cliche or corny, For sure. but it's still something that people can watch. Yeah. Now, um, are you hip to uh, Abbott Elementary? Mm-hmm. I no, love that show. That's a do- you, 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 I, that's I love that show. Yeah, dog. I, I love that show, man. That's, that's the dopest thing. It's like, I would watch The Office, but I could really never get into, into it. It's the like office. The Office, but like in, in a school. But, yeah, you know and it's black. And black. Yeah, and black. That's basically what no, it was. It's like, man. all right, bet. I, I, I really feel like you can give a black person any concept yeah. that was successful, and they can make it ten times exactly, successful. Exactly, exactly. And that's shows, no no. Shade. Some shows they shouldn't touch. I don't like how they try to redo Wonder Years with a black ass. I don't like that. I think because Wonder Years is a classic show. Though. Just keep it white, man. <laughs> I'm happy that they um. What's it called? I'm actually surprised what they did with Bel Air though. Yeah. Oh no, that was dope. They changed. Like they had the same concept, but they changed it to like real life. You know what I'm saying? Situations. Mm-hmm. I, I I love that um that series, man. Like and then like, the last episode with Marlon, like he did. You know what I'm saying? A great job because you used to seeing him being like on some corny stuff and mm-hmm. acting a fool. He came in that boy in a serious role. Like, I can't wait for season two, man. I can't either. That, that's, that's my shit, dog. And um, speaking of Easter Ray, like Insecure, that's another show. Like, my wife, like, she'd kill me if I got anything else on at that time at 10 o'clock on Sunday night, dog. Like, that got be on. That's a dope show. Like I said, mm-hmm. her 50. They, they, like you said, they made their own little way and as an overall brand with the shows that they're that they doing. And 50 just took over stars. So it's like, man. Every show he putting out is like hitting. Even Money. that one show for life that came on ABC. And I'm mad that they didn't. Um, no, me too, man. Because I think I think it just got too political. Yeah. Cause I think when they started in, like doing all the COVID stuff yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to make things more modern and not stay to the story, I think mm-hmm. that's what really killed it. Cause that first season was 
Oh, duh, dude. for sure. The, the first episode, I ain't never been moved by. I, I saw it. I'm like, damn, it's actually. Hell yeah, I was locked in. I'm, I'm like, like, damn, bro. That first season was dope. I think once he got out of prison and stuff like that, like it, it changed up a little bit. It was still good, but mm -hmm. it changed up a little bit. But those episodes when he was in prison and he got to the prison brawl, he was fighting my mm -hmm. man's and stuff. It was like, and then that's when they um. They was tripping out when they realized my man was gay when he had that person come visit. Mm -hmm. Like, they was in the, in the prison at the uh, full 50. Everything he be in, though, you hate him. Like, this nigga. <laughs> like, everything. Everything he be in, dog. For, now, man, you know what I'm saying? I, I listened to the last pod that you was on. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, being a, uh, you say you, you're being a child of God and stuff like that, man. Like, is it hard, like, when you are yes. around friends? <laughs> like, <laughs> Like we are around friends, do you got like do they got alright hit on air? Like or you just like I believe in my beliefs, but I'm not gonna be like you know how some people like try to sell it on somebody else, like uh -huh. listen, you should change how, how I you would are. say when I really started getting serious in my walk, I lost a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say I lost them as a friendship, but the things we used to do we didn't do anymore. So yeah. the uh the depth of our friendship either it matured or it mm -hmm. depreciated because I didn't do what I used to do anymore. Yeah. I still got love for me. And there's some people that actually was envious mm -hmm. in a secret way mm -hmm. just because um, I was doing different things. And, mm -hmm. I, and people always feel like when you're not doing what you used to do anymore, you're saying that they aren't, you know, yeah, uh, worthy, worthy right. of my time <laughs> and stuff. It's like, no, it's just like everybody has a time where they have to grow and figure out if they're going to keep doing what they used to do mm -hmm. or what they should be doing. Cause I actually just wrote about this today. On one of my um, morning uh, devotionals that I do, mm -hmm. um, it's like the red pill and the blue pill. Mm -hmm. To the red pill, it's like, you know, living life on self. When you live on life on self, you're doing things that only you can do. So you can do whatever you want because mm -hmm. God gives us free will, mm -hmm. but you're limited to what you can do. So if you are successful, mm -hmm. you have to make sure everything you're doing stays that way because you are your own God of your life. For sure. You're the reason you're there and you're the reason why you're going to fall. So if you get tired, mm. you can't take a break because you're the reason you got there. Yeah. When we're tired, we make bad decisions and we start doing things we're not supposed to do. And then we yeah. get mad because, dang, we're slipping up. Yeah. But we're the reason why we're slipping yeah, up fact, because so. we're the reason why everything is happening. Yeah. Take the blue pill. You have boundaries and limits. People don't like boundaries and limits. Yeah, right. And that's really what the relationship with God is like. People think that you have to favorite thing well if you follow god you can't do this yeah. you can't drink you can't smoke now what it really says is don't get drunk yeah never says you can't drink because sure. jesus turned water, water into wine and stuff yeah. so what it's really saying is don't go overly to the point where you're not yourself anymore yeah, yeah. so like just be conscious of stuff or it's like the how everybody want to say you can't have sex and everything i really feel like people try to put their own insecurity of the Bible on other people because they never took the time to really develop a relationship with God and learn the Bible yourself. Yeah. Because it's like, he's only, it's, God is really just like a parent. Your yeah. parent had rules and boundaries, not because they didn't like you, yeah. but because they wanted to protect you. Yeah, sure. You can't be out at 12 years old, at 12 <laughs> o'clock at night, yeah, roaming sure. the streets and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Well, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, sure. But that's yeah. like kind of like how God is. It's like, he's putting these things in perspective to keep you safe because he has a bigger plan for you. Mm -hmm. So when you're on your purpose, on your uh, assignment, mm -hmm. yes, you can't, like for me, for writing, I could, if I really tried, mm -hmm. I probably could be, and everybody say this, but I probably could be a rapper. Yeah. But that's not what my gift is in. For sure. My gift was in film and theater and everything yeah. else that I'm doing. So more doors are gonna open because I'm on assignment. I have to force the doors open with rapping. Yeah, 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 for sure. But if I stick with film, like how everything has been given to me, I didn't really do anything out of the ordinary for BML. I didn't do anything out of the ordinary for consequences, for black lives, yeah. when directing different projects. Literally I was just saying I wanna do this and I put myself in position for it and God said, All right, cool. Boom. For sure. And I feel like when you're more obedient, more things be open. Because even if you are at time disobedient, he's still going to bless you. Yeah, but sure. it's only get to a certain extent until yeah. you really kind of like get to that next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do people already like kind of like have like this, all right, we just because they might see you on social media, how you is, which are least they kind of mm -hmm. have like this prejudgment of you. Like, of course. Oh, he going to be like this. Or, of course. You know what I'm saying? So they have a conversation. Yeah, for sure. Because after you have the conversation, you like you get exposed to something different. Yeah. It's like, oh, wow, you're not what I thought you were. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And... Yeah. 
I learned to not take offense to it because yeah. you just don't know what you just don't know. Yeah. Cause you know, with some people, we be like, oh man, we don't want him around. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause he gonna be bringing the Lord into Yeah, cause you think about it, shoot. I still live my normal life. Like, you yeah. know, I do what I do. As yeah. you just saw, my mouth is very filthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm like, I ain't gonna lie. I prejudge. I'm like, damn, I ain't gonna be a cuss on this show like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm mean? saying? Like, <laughs> but I feel like, cause it's like in the Bible, Jesus went to all types of different places, you know? Yeah. Uh, parties, uh, you know, saints like you know, sinners and stuff yeah, with yeah, the yeah. Uh, taxpayers and stuff. People where you was judged at being in, but it's just kind of like you got to meet people where they at. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. all it is. That's all being a disciple is. But then you got those people that's into the church that judge you, like, all right, you deep into this, but you talk mm -hmm. like this or whatever. And he don't like that either. Yeah. It's like it really says in the Bible, like you know, I hate people that try to use my name in vain and try to use it as like a. Thou should not do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You feel me? Also, Goku. Like you're doing this, forbid you. I'm yeah, like, for sure. But that's like, what? That's, I think that's like probably like the old school way of thinking when it comes it to like being. And that's why a lot church. of people are have church hurt, and that's yeah. why a lot of people don't want to go to church because like, yeah. bro. I ain't trying to get judged. Exactly. I'd rather be out here with my niggas where they not going to judge me and I can yeah. be myself. Yeah. Where church is supposed to be like yeah. that. And that's why I rock with this one pastor, man, when I, uh, I was going to church, uh, Reverend Killock. Mm -hmm. like, that's crazy. That's my uh, uncle-in-law. Oh, for real? Your cousin in law I don't how you want to pronounce that one. Yeah. He in law or something. I don't yeah. know. Shit. But he had told me about, the, about his church. Like, dog, this church is like hype. I'm like, damn, for real? So then we went, and it's like, dog, it was, it was so packed. We was like, oh, it's overflow. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dog, like, what he was saying, move me. I'm like, damn. Like, I had been in church before, and I really didn't like what the pastor was talking about, how mm -hmm. he was. But this dude is like somebody I can relate to. Almost in a, in a sense, dog. And yeah, I was I was going to his church, and I seen a difference when I went and moved to Texas, went to the church my brother's going mm -hmm. to. I'm like, this don't seem authentic. Yeah, you can always you can always sense the authenticity <laughs> of it, because yeah. like I went to a church New Year's. Um, <laughs> but my girl's like, I want to go to this church. And I'm like, all right, fine, we can go to this church. I ain't yeah. tripping because it's church. I'm For like, sure. cool. We go in there, and I don't want to say this was a red flag, yeah. but. <laughs> On New Year's, typically New Year's services are packed out. You yeah, have Easter, Easter Mother's you have Day. Mother's Day, yeah. you have Christmas, you yeah. have New Year's. Sure, yeah, Those yeah. are typically the days when churches are packed out. Yeah. I go in there, I want to say it was probably us three plus <laughs> 10 more people, max. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just, it's quiet. They look, me, my girl, and her sisters, They walk, we walked in, and they looked at us like, I'm like, what's your, what what's going on? So I'm like, all right, cool. And now I'm already on edge. It's just now my nigga senses are like just hearing shit. Yeah. So we there and they singing and stuff. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever, right? Yeah. Pastor, well, yeah, the preacher started preaching, and the message threw me off. She was like, listen, 2022. You want to be rich? God wants to make you rich. Yeah. He's going to give you a Bentley. He's going to give you a Benz. He's going to give you a million dollars. He wants you to be whole. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That ain't saying say nothing <laughs> in that in the yeah. Bible. I don't remember reading that in what's uh, it called this Venus. chapter. God wants us to have a Bentley, <laughs> a Mercedes, and a hundred thousand million dollars. And I was, I was, I'm like, and then one thing I was waiting for, I'm like, all right, cool. Where's the scripture? Yeah. Where's the scripture? Because it's always an illegal sermon if you use no scripture. Yeah. It's just an opinion. Yeah. That's all it is. Whole hour, no scripture. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you wild. Yeah, dog. And then she got mad. She was like, I need all y'all young people to stand up because y'all too dead in here. Guys looking at you. <laughs> and I'm like, and I stood up. She's like, yes. I'm like, no. And I, and I walked out. <laughs> I walked out. <laughs> I was like, I'm not standing because what you're saying. I'm yeah. leaving yeah. because I care about my spirit too much no, for you to keep up funny as hell, man. But it be a lot of, you know, and you got a lot of fake church people, man. You know what I'm saying? Like people, people just go there. Hold on, man. Let me ask you a question, man. <laughs> What do you, between the church girls and the club girls, man, who come in the most strapped? Because we go to the church, don't go there. <laughs> and just talk about that. Sometimes, I don't know, oh. I go to church, I'm like, don't y'all wearing that? Like, I would, wow. I would say people are Amazing. more conscious about what they wear to the club before what they wear to church. Man. Man. Yeah, because the church, them church girls, be You're the right one. you like... <laughs> We went, like I said, we went to Killot Church. What was the name of that church again? Triumph. Triumph. We went there. It was like the club, dog. Like, dude, like, you see this? I mean, I'm elbowing him. Like, oh, you see this? <laughs> dog, because, man, yeah, that might be a spot to go to. <laughs> Praise the Lord and Keisha. <laughs> 
Hey, this is before I was, I was in a relationship too, man. But yeah, that, that, that's wild. That's wild, man. Yeah, but no, you gotta find the like I said, when you're coming to you know saying going to church, I believe you gotta find a, the right church, yeah, the right surroundings, the right pastor, man. And uh, cause I used to, man, I ain't gonna say hate, but I used to dislike going to my uncle church because it was like one of those small churches where you could shake everybody's hand from your seat. And it was just like it seemed authentic. It just seemed like you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. it, was, it was just the old way of preaching. I think nowadays with when it comes to you know it could be church, basketball, it's a new day and age, and we ain't going all those old beliefs. Mm -hmm. Even with coaching, you starting to know it's like a lot of these universities are hiring younger coaches that can be you know what I'm saying somewhat identifiable with the kids mm -hmm. and not just some old head who know the game but still got them old ass beliefs and shit the kids ain't gonna want to go to school with you know what I'm saying so that's why I think it's a time where everything is is changes a new wave and ain't that same old day thinking and shit mm -hmm. so yeah so yeah you 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 preachers and everybody else man get y'all stuff together <laughs> <laughs> now man, oh, man um last thing I'm gonna ask about the church sometimes can you be too deep into your beliefs that it, like I said, you lost friends. Can it hurt you being so deep into the into the church, into the word that it hurts relationships because they not really used to this new you? If you're doing it for you. Mm -hmm. Like and I say this like that because when you're in your that journey, you have to know that you're sacrificing and you're always serving somebody because Jesus came to serve. Mm -hmm. So if you're going on the path of church looking at solely as yourself then yes it can hurt you sure. because you're going to be blind and you're going to hurt yourself because you're not holding yourself accountable for what you're doing because mm -hmm. it's like i'm doing this for me and only for me but if you're doing it for others like for example when i got with my girlfriend i had to change the way i thought about a lot of things yeah, for sure. it was like all right cool i can't spent all my money on me Man. or put like this here's a perfect example <laughs> if i go to this to this food restaurant store whatever and i get me some food and some fries i better get her something no, or right? get some fries yeah. for her you because gotcha. she's going to look at me and say oh what's that yeah. and not even say can i have some grab, your grab it <laughs> and then look at you and no. smile and eat and no. continue to do it for sure. but that's kind of how it is you got to be prepared to serve others at all times because sure. you'll know who's going to be for you and who's going to be against you mm -hmm. in that route sure. so Hell yeah. Hell yeah man and you right about that food thing that's the one thing i'll be i'll be i'll be, I'll be envious of my friends who are single like you just eat by yourself and you order, <laughs> order what you want tell you man. i go out to a regular mcdonald's for example i'm spending 30 dollars because i got me my son my other son uh -huh. my wife. It's, it's so much <laughs> i went to bucharest the other day and she told me because I think I was we was doing something. <laughs> she got some food from Jimmy John's earlier, and I was we was supposed to see each other till later on that night. But <laughs> she didn't have to go to work, so I came back to the crib. I had my Bucharest, <laughs> had my fries and stuff. I go upstairs to wash my hands because I ain't nasty ass nigga, so yeah. I wash my hands before I eat. For sure. I go downstairs. <laughs> she already opened the bag in the box. Duh. Hey babe, Man. Eden. How come you asked me if I wanted some? Well, got well, you already <laughs> in it. Your <laughs> hands already there. Duh. That uh, fool get you in so many arguments with when your relationship, dog. They don't know what they want to no eat. No reason. <laughs> they want to bring it up in your face again. Man. Oh, babe, let me get the. Uh, uh you let me have your. Man, you already bro, took the prize. I couldn't even. You'd be mad. I'm like, I'm in love. Like, my son, he grown. He ain't got like grown man now. You like, damn, this bill might be crazy. You think about the bill, not even how how, how good the food gonna be. Facts. Damn. I'll... Only thing that's the advantage is she doesn't eat meat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so all sure. I'm doing is paying for sides. <laughs> When you go with your homeboys out to eat, like, damn, I'm just paying for myself. Like, you get appetizers, you get dessert, you mm -hmm. get everything, drinks, all that stuff, man. Now, man, I usually when um, people be on a show who do music or whatever, I ask them, uh, are you, um, do you know about making a band back in the day? Mm -hmm. Now, I ask them to give give me a band with them and four other rappers, singers, producers, whatever. I'm asking you on the acting aspect, give me your making a band with you, four other actors or actresses that you would want to work with. For a movie, or it'd be, so basically five five major roles in the movie, you and four other people. Who you want to work with? All right, I'll give you some on the back end and the front end. On the back end, give me the uh, executive producer. It has to be fifty. All right, hell yeah, fast. One of the creative directors got to be Issa Rae, That's good along Rae. with, like I said, Jordan Peele. All right, then. Director, if I'm saying it right, Efi or E5 Rivera. All right. Um, acting wise, 
That's me, a dope ass show. <laughs> Why are we gonna go meet all the people? <laughs> Put me in there. For sure, you and four other people. Hell yeah. Yeah, but uh, I would love to see Damson Idris. Yeah, yeah, he he dope. He, he I watched alongside <laughs> with Tyreek. I would love to see that. Yeah, them two. Hi, yeah, go ahead. Then, Tyreek finally getting love now, though. Yeah, <laughs> and then female. You need Coco Jones. No comment. And <laughs> you gotta watch Bel Air, but <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to think of one more female for real. And she brought. Give me Viola Davis. All right, bet, bet. Hey, good one, good one, good one. Yeah, Coco Jones. You gotta look on Instagram though. You can't go crazy on likes. You be like, <laughs> nah, that's what. Oh yeah, on your movie, man. First. First scene, y'all in the bed, you liking somebody else's picture, dog. In real life, nigga, that can't happen, dog, right? <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, but Not like, at all. Now, are you upset if you see, um, okay, two situations. If you see a girl liking all Chris Brown pictures, are you upset? You know, <laughs> me and my girl actually had an argument about that shit. <laughs> we did. We did. Because it was... Um, like, damn, I keep seeing I think, every No, I was... It was one of my friends that I was on Instagram and she posts a lot. So like, and she followed too. Like, well, she followed because I followed her, mm -hmm. but I was double tapping. Like, okay. Next day, double tap, yada, yada, yada. So she like, Oh, you liking her picture again? I'm like, she just posted it. She was like, yeah. something you see, you like something you see. I'm like, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. You are under this dude picture yeah. all the time. Yeah. But that don't mean anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's the same thing. Yeah. She was like, no, it's not. So I think it is. I think it's because of the proximity. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> I think it's because she's in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. But that dude's Definitely. somewhere yeah. in like, you know, sure. Cali. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, I can't do anything yeah, with that. For sure. So that's why I think it's the issue. Because yeah. if I was, because we both not, agreed that I can like Rihanna picture. So yeah. Rihanna, <laughs> if you ever see this, yeah. and in a few years, or even now, <laughs> <laughs> I blow up yeah. Baby we still stay together yeah. But Rihanna Please come yeah. be our sugar mama Now yeah. <laughs> 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 now, On the flip side If she like in Craig from Detroit That's her friend Picture all the time you Yeah tripping? nah Yeah I am I okay. am, I am. <laughs> She like nah Cause one She don't got any friends She's yeah. staying with her family So if you liking to do Picture and stuff Consistently <laughs> yeah, I'm so like okay Who is this dude Why yeah. you liking the pictures And then why haven't I heard about yeah, this yeah, Craig yeah. dude type shit? Because you ain't got no friends. I'm your friend. For sure. no, that's you get mad yeah. when I go outside and with my friends. You leaving me? Yeah. I'm just going outside for a walk. For sure. How long you going to be there? Yeah, because my thing is like, when my, 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 my wife, male friends, is like my shit, my uncle, her cousin, is like my brother, nigga. Go ahead, them your male friends, goddamn. Ain't no motherfucking Brandon coming over. Like, At all. Fuck, you feel me? Like, like, cause it's only, it's really only one it's only a few, but it's only one friend that she just trusts, is which is like my friend grew up with Ty. Yeah. That's the only one. Everybody else? Hmm. Yeah, for sure. You got a good mm. one, man. Yeah, you got a good one for sure, man. Now, before I get to the last segment, man, I want to ask one last question, man. What's your definition of success? <sighs> my definition of success is authentic happiness in what you love doing. For sure. That's a fact. Yeah, cause everybody think the money and stuff like that. You can make money and be miserable with life. Man, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't been up some dog shit, and I'd have been dog down some yeah, <laughs> dog sure. shit. And it's just like only thing that's really was different was my level of happiness and peace. Yeah, that was yeah. really thing. So it wasn't because of the money, just because the money just gave me certain freedom to I have to worry about certain things yeah, anymore. Yeah, exactly. So like when I was up some dog shit, um, I was able to give more freely and kind of be more creative and stuff mm -hmm. but i think just as a man in general when you not when you when your money ain't right Duh. oh you you in a yeah. you mad at life bro, bro. you wake up she's like what's wrong Duh. you not just see this yeah. motherfucking toilet dog for sure for sure dog no, that's a fact dog it's been times i was in bed so broke dude, i'm crying tears nigga like <laughs> and that's why you got the right woman the yeah. right woman yeah. is going to help you because the wrong woman she gonna just yeah because the right woman gonna encourage you though like and, and by, oh, it's gonna be okay they're gonna make you they're gonna feed you like that that, mm -hmm. that love and it be, all right babe, i can get through it like you know what i'm yeah. saying the wrong one be like Motherfucker, you put extra stress on this shit. I'm broke and you act like a motherfucker. You, you know what? Me? Like, that's why I feel like it's like, very damn. important for her. Because she, she definitely, like, when I was up, 
because I'm, I'm still like in a good position, but like when I was like, when things didn't fall through, like it's supposed to fall through, yeah, yeah. I was like, God damn. She's <laughs> like, listen, you still got other cheese coming in here and here. For sure, for Let's sure. do this. Boom, boom. If you need help, I got you. And even when she said that, I was like, yeah. I'm like, <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. you don't want to take that. You don't want to take that. <laughs> but I was in my head, I was like, I'm glad that you said that though. Exactly. exactly. I'm not going to do that. Cause you know when things get real, y'all get deep into your relationship. As far as like you know, if y'all got married plans and stuff like that, she gonna be she gonna have your back. If she got mm-hmm. your back right now doing it, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So that's what's up. And shout out to girlfriend, man. But uh, versus about man, I give you a, uh, two situations or two things or two people, and you tell me who win. Your mom cooking versus your grandma cooking. <laughs> 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 Got to I gotta give it a grandma. Yeah, all right. grandma know how to put that extra bit of love in it. Yeah, whereas sure. like mama, she she puts some love in, but sometimes yeah, yeah. be like a little bit like mama, you put so much, <laughs> you put so much of this in it. <laughs> and then so grandma, I don't know what it was, cause the grandma be having a little, little thing right dog, there. Dog, I tell you, I said this joke on previous show, dog. When you got that little, I call them grandma peas. Like when you got those, bro, the macaroni coming out delicious. Facts, like I ain't never had a bad meal from grandma. Bro, I had a few bad meals from had, mom. And she probably used to wear a house coat too. Exactly. Yeah, so, see, that's a classic gra- grandma. Grandma, cause like shoot, <laughs> grandma be cooking all day. Mom be coming home and get off. All right, what you want? Is, <laughs> is the meat up? They mad about it. Mama be mad about it. Grandma happy to cook. Mom mad. Got to come home. And then grandma, you eat, baby. You ain't eat. She stopped the presses. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, come on right now I'm no, gonna get it for you sure. You go mama I ain't, I ain't eat Shit what that girl doing <laughs> What yeah. that got to do with me Shit I no, ain't eat For sure for sure. That's classic though But no Definitely when you got that little That little fat hanging boy You you put some work in yep. You ain't you ain't been through life Like when you, you come here boy Skinny arms home Nah no, you ain't been through nothing yet At all You ain't had no house call You coming out there looking all youthful <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here I don't want to eat your food <laughs> My grandma My grandma oh. man She definitely had that job, dog. With a house coat And my wife grandma Same way House coat up Like alright This classic mm-hmm. I trust this <laughs> uh, Day life or night life mm. It all depends I ain't gonna lie I'd probably say day Yeah I like to get all my stuff Out the way And then come home And be in the crib Relaxed In For the sure. bed Right Boom, but if you know, it's a rare occasion you see me on the nightlife scene. For sure, summertime gear versus wintertime gear. Oh, summertime for sure. I hate being cold. Yeah, yeah. I rather I rather do fall. Yeah, okay, cause you can get that little crew neck hoodie, you can get a nice still. little sweater yeah, in. Yeah, you sure. know, it's not too cold, not too hot for real. Cause summertime it's like it's cool, but then it's like I go through too many outfits during the summer, yeah, man. You, you just hot as hell. hell. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. in the cold, you just layering up. You just put anything on. You're like, <laughs> I right, put this on, put this on. For got sure. three pairs of socks. Cause that Michigan cold. Duh, for sure, for sure. You definitely socking up. Uh, uh, Wayne versus Drake. I'm gonna go with Wayne. I'm sorry. All right. All right. Old school Wayne. Yeah, I think I'm gonna know. I know the answer to this one. Uh, rap versus R&B. R&B. Yeah. R&B. See, I mean, we just talking about R&B. Like, you get more better R&B albums now than rap albums. Yeah. Though. Like, I think it's too many rap niggas. That's why. R&B <laughs> helped helped me a lot when I write. Yeah. Because it's like, especially I, I, listen, I, I listen to R&B, but I listen to a lot of feasible or sensible women R&B yeah, some sure. of the R&B for women no, I'll be like hold on female R&B uh, acts are killing the, the males right now man for real man killing facts them. killing them like, I'll be f- finding new people every day like damn who's this shoot. sound good like, give me a nice little uh, vocal ripple or whatever she be doing <laughs> that shit that we call I was like oh, you sound good baby <laughs> yeah, yeah. have you ever heard a song just make you do it on Tiana Taylor uh, got uh, on her last album it's a song with her and Kelani I think it's called Morning. I don't know what it is about when Kaylani on something. Yeah, duh. I'd be like, that's what made me want to just jump through the damn phone and get with them. Like, like, Facts. The way it was singing, it was like, it touched me, though. Like, Facts. So it's like, called Morning, though. If y'all listen to Tiana Taylor Morning, y'all got to hear that shit. Uh, tacos versus burgers. Burgers. Yeah, good. But you got to make sure it's a good burger, man. I yeah, hate good dry burger. ass burgers. So. Man, bur- you got to make sure the sauce in the burger hitting too, yeah, though. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Apple juice versus orange juice. Both, you gotta mix them hoes. <laughs> <laughs> TV shows versus movies. TV shows. All right, writing versus acting. Writing. All right, hanging with friends. I mean, hanging with fam or hanging in the streets. Fam for sure. All right, last one: Air Ones versus Air Maxes. 
Ones all day. Give me a fresh pair of whites. All right, all right. All right, Jordan one, Jordan ones versus a white Air Force. Uh, give me some Jordan ones. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Them Jordan ones. I'm my my collection getting kind of deep in a minute. Uh, you know what? I got something in a minute. I, I never had a pair of all white ones. I never had a pair of Jordan ones. I just got some. <laughs> never, they, Within they, the last five years, I just got my first pair of both of them. Damn. Cause like, you know, when I was growing up, pops had a, had a, had a, had a one, so yeah. I just I wear his. But yeah. when I was getting my own my own. Thanks. Are you still a Oh, I was still watching. I was still everything. <laughs> I was still everything. It was just like, but I could never fit most of this stuff. So I had to put like, I put like different soles and yeah, stuff, yeah, or yeah. I had to put an extra hole in the belt or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that extra hole for sure. My mom used to get that little knife and <laughs> put that hole in there. That belt be way over here. You wrap it around three times. I'm gonna wrap around you like belt <laughs> around. She like you a motherfucker, a uh, uh, cowboy. That like, take that boy off. <laughs> He'd be like, what you say? <laughs> Yeah, we think hit five niggas with that boy. <laughs> Duh, that's funny as hell. Now, I get top three, man. Top three childhood celebrity crushes. Megan Good for one. Yeah, Megan Good yeah, for you, you one. You was a real smart man. <laughs> Brandy. Yeah, man. I, I, I just love Brandy. I, and I like her voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not And then... I forgot her, her, her real name, but... Um, Katie from My oh, Wife and Kids. Yeah, she yeah. fine as hell, even though we're the same age. And see, that's the thing hell. about it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little older. So I look at Katie, I was old. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm 35. So I look at Katie now, like, God damn, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> you grew up marvelous. Like, her and old girl from My Wife and Kids. Uh-huh. Who on, uh, on Power with uh, Tommy. Yep. Mm-hmm. They both grew up like overnight, like dog. But Katie, nigga, shit, Katie, goddamn, Katie, <laughs> <laughs> she went crazy, boy. <laughs> Give me your top three moments in life so far. Top three, N- number one for sure is just had to be the movie. Mm-hmm. That whole process was dope. It's just something that not a lot of people got got to say they do and sure. doing that start to finish, putting the whole premiere together seeing everybody come like that just was, yeah, that was, that was amazing yeah. so a movie for show um second and some yeah second would be working with that pastor mm-hmm. for that was a dope experience just seeing like watching somebody that's helped you grow and uh been pouring life into you and just the information we shared in the time that moment mm-hmm. dope as hell mm-hmm. and then third thing for real mm, it's a combination my brother graduated from high school and then uh him about to produce his video game oh that's dope hell yeah that's dope some dope moments dog hell yeah hell yeah give me your top three tv shows Top Ever. three TV shows. I can literally love watching. I tell you right now, my wife and kids, Jamie Foxx show, uh, and then Jamie Foxx so underrated them mug. Underrated like yeah. a mug, bro. And this one's really a toss up. People sleep with my wife and kids too. I would say the Wayne Brothers. Thank no. You're a good person. <laughs> this nigga's a hater, dog. He hate the Wayne Brothers. Cause what's dog. it called? Like I would come home from school dog, I was happy at three, said. like three thirty. I was glued from three thirty to six because those would come on back to back, back to, to back, back yep. to back, and then one sister park would come on. Yep. Fast. So when they put them things on, you, what's it called? Glue. Hulu. I was dog. there just living hater, my childhood. Bro, I told stuff. you, Wayne Brothers is a good show, dog. He said the only reason why it's good is if it pops wasn't on the show, it'd be tr- it'd be trash. I can see that though. Yeah. I now, like, Jamie Foxx, though, I bet you didn't, you didn't peep this, dog. With Jamie Foxx, his last name was, was King, right? Mm-hmm. So, he's related to the auntie, the mom. Mm-hmm. So, the mom got the last name King because she's married to Junior King. So, how do Jamie Foxx have the last name King if he's not blood related to Junior King? I ain't never asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> like, I always like, wait, how is this nigga named Jamie King? And that was not his parents. And his mom got the la- his auntie got the last name King through marriage. That's what shit I- I'm guaranteed they didn't pay attention to when he was writing that show. Though. Probably not. They just want to put that shit out there. <laughs> yeah, like, nigga, how are you a King? Then you a Thomas. <laughs> you show me. Because your, your auntie maiden name was not King, nigga. She didn't have King twice. Like, that shit crazy, dog. But yeah, that's a uh, different thing. <laughs> Give me your top three fools, man. 
<laughs> no, for sure. His name is Jamie King. Maybe they adopted him. I, but he didn't move until he, he moved with them when he was grown. Because he was, he was in Texas <laughs> with his mama. Shit. He said, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> so I always wonder, like, how's this nigga's last name King? Nigga, like, unless her name was King already, which uh, the likelihood of that was, like, nigga, far from none, dog. So, yeah, so, yeah, whoever wrote Jamie Foxx, uh, so y'all messed up, dog. His, his last name should not be King. His shit should be Williams or Thomas or something, dog. <laughs> Give me your top three fools, man. Top three fools. Chicken parm. Good choice. Um, chicken parm. St stuffed chicken. Yeah, chicken, chicken. I love, I love <laughs> chicken. Yeah. And I got to be, I got a good one for the culture. The lamb chops go crazy. For sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Now we end everything off, man. Drunk moment or hot moment, man. I'm glad I'm able to ask you this question. Give me a story when you was one or both. Both. Okay, you right. <laughs> It was my first time really doing anything. Yeah. Uh freshman year of college. I just I just broke up with my ex and Oh yeah. The, the, it was, the way I did it was messed up. I don't I'm not even gonna say how I did it because she gon' she she listened to it, she probably gonna cuss me out again. Yeah. But I broke up I broke up with her. Mm -hmm. I broke up with her on her birthday, we just say that. Damn, you sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Regular birthday, and then, after, and then I went to um, I went to CMU with my best friend. Okay. So I told everybody like, yeah, I broke up with my girl, and I don't know what it is when you say that. Be like, it's time to celebrate, bro. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So they gave me some um some shots, and then one of my mans at the time he was like, want to hit this? I'm like, what is it? He was like, he was like lean. I'm like. Oh damn, this nigga was going crazy. I'm like, <laughs> I thought he was doing the weed. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, fuck it, let's do it. Did that, and then before the party, we had like a session and whip off the bong. <laughs> and closed the windows closed, dog. And then we had more shots, and I bullshit you not. After that last shot and hit from the bong, yeah. I woke up the next day. Not remember anything. Still saw videos. I saw a video of me hanging out the window, yelling at people. Duh. I saw a video of me running down the street. I saw a video of me drunk calling my ex a thousand times. Probably talking crazy. I woke up, saw nothing but miss message like missed calls from her. A message saying, and I quote, <laughs> <laughs> "He's still remember." I still remember, and I quote, "You are stupid." Yeah. But I can't do it anymore. Have fun up there with your best friend. Man, you, you, probably, you probably went and started saying some crazy shit to her, too. Called back. It was blocked. Damn. You said some <laughs> wild shit to her. I said some wild shit. So they had you on camera running? Running. Throwing up, the, throwing up gang signs. I was, dog. bro, whole ass hood rat. Man. <laughs> whole ass no, hood rat. But see, I, I had a situation like that, too. I just remember I, hear, I was hearing people like talking about me. I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing about it. Like, See, I, that's why I just stopped smoking all together, man. I, I hated those outer body experiences. Like, so I shouldn't be able to see myself or what I'm doing right yeah. now, looking at me, looking dumb as hell. Like, hell that yeah. shit Bro, stupid. I'm telling you, in this corner right here, I was staying in Texas, I came to visit. In this corner, same seat, dog. And I'm just looking at my man's his cousin. I'm like, this nigga think I'm high. I'm like, this nigga think I'm high. Like, prove this nigga wrong. Nigga, you ain't high. Like, dog, I'll just be... And then I started thinking about the wildest shit, man. Like, I'm thinking about what my wife could be doing, what she could be, you know what I'm saying? Your mind just be racing. Yeah, like, like, you that's why thinking, I can't do it. Like, it's, mm -mm. I, I salute people who can smoke and still maintain their normal life. Like, my brother smoking go right to work. Like, how you do that, nigga? You work at the plant, nigga. Like, how you how you functioning right, dog? But that nigga been a pothead his whole life, so I guess that nigga's used to that shit, dog. But shit, man. Appreciate you coming on the show, bro. Appreciate you having me. Where can they find you on socials and all that stuff and, and the movies and everything you got going on? Everything across the board is underscore E Michael, M I C H A E L, underscore. Uh, movies on Tubi, you can't miss it. You see a big black dude's face right there. That's me, you know. <laughs> uh, beautiful, you feel me? But <laughs> you type in consequences, you see me. Type in black lies, you're going to see me. Sure. Uh, but everything on Tubi is free. So I don't want to hear anybody talking about, do I got to put my card in? Do I got to yeah. pay? No, it don't, cost, it don't cost the support, you feel me? Support mm. black business. You can support other people, all this other stuff they're doing. Support us. Yeah. We trying to make it out the hood. <laughs> I'm trying to eat. You know what yeah. we trying to do? For sure. Hey, I'm trying to get <laughs> 
started this podcast on motherfucking You something. feel me? Shit. Everything is free. I don't want to hear nothing when stuff start actually accumulating in that price. Hey man, let me get some off the love. Man, yeah. For the love, you ain't show no yeah, love. Yeah, sure. <laughs> fast, cause niggas definitely gonna be trying to get some. Hey man, let me come on. Let me let me get. Let me come with you, dog. Like nah, bro. But you get more love from strangers than your your people though. When you do anything, I've, I've noticed that you get so much more love from fast. people who you don't know than people you do know. I don't have none of my homies share my stuff except for two. Nah, and, <laughs> I, and it's family. Too. I support. I love the few people. Those three people all the time. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'd be like, yes. Yeah, thank for you. sure. I appreciate it. Yeah. Either way, I still. I figured out they watch either way it goes. Though. Yeah, for sure. Even Especially I, I saw my homeboy post some shit that his 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 boy did. I'm like, damn, cause we've been we've been cool since fifteen. Nigga. You ain't posting. Well, you don't even know what my podcast about nigga. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, we know my shit. The concept of my shit is, nigga. I could be like, yeah, we we talk about dating. Like, nigga, this nigga wouldn't know. He about work. He just throws me out there. T- oh yeah, I saw that episode, man. <laughs> that was yeah. a good ass episode. We saw it this. You're just like, this dumb this mother. <laughs> For sure, man. You want to leave people with some motivational words, man, that they can, you know, what I'm saying. Yeah, I can uh, drop a little gem real quick. Yeah, go ahead, man. Bless. Me. Um, the biggest thing in life is finding out what you're, sp- you're supposed to do. Find your purpose and speaking a language that is different than everybody else's language. I know I have a, a conference I'm doing on June 11th. It's uh, this 1% Better Speaking Conference. And my topic is uh, your healing is in your language. Mm-hmm. I feel like the way we speak about ourselves is uh, conducive to the life that we live. Mm-hmm. So if you're speaking the language of faith, you're speaking of language of life. You're speaking the language of I can do this, or you just keep pushing no matter what's going on in your life, you're going to keep pushing. Or For people sure. speak the language of fear where they keep things under wraps or in their own control because like we said earlier they're afraid to move they're afraid to let it go Mm -hmm. so the biggest thing that i want people to know is the life you live is the life that you speak because you're there's power in your words there's power in your tongue like he says in the bible life death is the power of the tongue Mm -hmm. but i I think that your healing is attached to the language you speak Mm -hmm. because it's just like you can't say that you want the number one podcast and you want all this stuff, but you're not doing the things to have the number sure. one podcast. Yeah. You can't be in your podcast saying, well, my podcast isn't like theirs. My podcast and this or other stuff. No, you can't do that. My podcast is you have to know what lane you're in mm-hmm. and drive your own race. For because sure. if you look over left or right, what happens? You're going to veer off into yeah, somebody yeah. else's lane. <laughs> and now you're going to miss something that, you, that was for you because mm-hmm. you're paying attention to somebody else's stuff mm-hmm. instead of being locked in on your own, you your own goal, your own fool, your own mission. So I feel like as long as you speak a language of faith and if you pay attention to what's meant for you and show love and come from a place of love, life is going to be unlimited for you because you're in your own purpose, not their purpose. I think that was the best closing words ever, though, on the show, though. So, <laughs> so I, like I said, I appreciate you coming on again, man. Appreciate it, You know what I'm saying? Man. Hey, he said when he reached out, he was like, dog, I didn't know he even sent me a message saying it was my spam shit <laughs> on IG. I was on the dark side of this shit, dog. <laughs> it's cool, though. It's cool. But, no, I appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, man. And, uh, shoot, man, I, I, I hope, I wish you success as far as your movie and your writing and all that good stuff, man. Appreciate it, man. So, uh, yeah, shout out to everybody. Voice of Detroit, Podcast MVP, man. Episode 119, Eric Michael.